Welcome to the Africa Hotel Investment Forum podcast and YouTube channel. I'm delighted to be joined by Mr. Germawake, char Chairman of Rwanda. Um, you've just come off stage and um, wanted to ask you a few more questions just about some of the things that you mentioned. So liberalization in Africa and liberalization of the, of, of the skies is a, big, is a big deal. You had an interesting um, angle on this. It would be great to just hear that again and, and for you to elaborate on, uh, on the future. Thank you very much. The uh, African version of uh, liberalization is, is called Yamasukru decision. The Yamasukru decision took some time to be really fu fully implemented. But now, with the introduction of the AFCAC as a regulatory agency for uh, liberalization within Africa, uh, by 2017, the whole of Africa will be open to all African carriers. The idea is for African carriers to freely operate within Africa and improve the uh, connectivity of Africa among African countries. Once that is fully achieved, I believe Africa also has to work with other continents. And the liberalization with other continents will also have to take place. But it has to be done in phases. It cannot, it cannot be full liberalization for everybody at the same time. This did not happen in the States until, until 20 years ago. This did not happen in Europe even 10 years ago. We were told that you can only operate one or two flights out of some stations. So when it comes to Africa, everybody cannot jump in. It has, we want to have connection to the rest of the world. We want to allow other airlines to operate into our countries, but in a way that does not kill the African airlines. Okay. Now that's, that's really interesting. And one other topic which we didn't actually dis get time to discuss in the, uh, in the panel today was low-cost carriers. So Rwanda Air is a full-service carrier. It's a national carrier of Rwanda. Do you ever foresee that there will be a low-cost carrier for if a Rwanda low-cost carrier? And what do you feel about the rise of the low-cost carriers in Africa? Will it follow what's happened in the US and Europe, or will it, be, will it take a bit longer? Low-cost carrier implies that its, its cost base is low. Basically, in Africa, all airlines operate to the same airport, except very few countries. No, nobody has a secondary airport. Therefore, all airlines are paying the same type of fees, paying a very high price for fuel, paying navigational charges are high, airport charges are high. The chances of reducing cost is very, very difficult in Africa. And the volume has to be there. It will take time, but it will happen. Rwanda is, is developing an airline, and that airline is Rwanda Air. It is not going to be a low-cost carrier because it has to serve the business community, the, the convention traffic, and the tourist traffic. And the country wants it to be a quality airline. You cannot have a quality airline being the cheapest. It is not possible. And one more question about Rwanda specifically, because you did allude to it and it did cause a bit of a stir. Um, you've got some aircraft on order that are due, to, um, due to, to join the fleet, I think, in the next year or two. So can you just elaborate a little bit, just give us a real brief overview of where you're planning to use these, because I believe two of them are wide-body aircraft? Rwanda Air has eight airplanes today and has ordered four more. Two of these are 737-800 to really help build the traffic base and build Abu Kigali as a base. They, along with the other air, eight airplanes, they fly all over Africa, collect traffic into Kigali and from Kigali, it will feed into the wide body, the A330, to Dubai, to India, 
to China and to Europe. The idea is one, to make sure that Abu Dhabi becomes a sustainable, not Abu Dhabi, sorry, Kigali become a sustainable hub. The, idea, the second is today it's operating a narrow body to Dubai. It's collecting from all over Africa and transferring through Kigali to Dubai, operating a narrow body. The type of traffic is such they go to Dubai to buy a lot of, uh, they go for shopping. And when they come back from Dubai, they need a lot of space. With a narrow body, you cannot accommodate the passengers and their baggage. With a wide body, you can accommodate both. And therefore, this builds, improves the sellability of Rwanda Air into Dubai. The same thing into India. People go to India for tourism, for medical. When they come back, they come with a lot of things. Mm -hmm. You have to have the cargo capacity to carry that. Rwanda also, even without the airline flying into Europe, is having very good tourist traffic today. And it's preparing itself as a convention center for East and Central Africa. That cannot be accomplished without a good national carrier. And Rwanda is going to, Rwanda Air is going to feel that need for Rwanda to be attractive to tourists and for conventions. Sure. Well, I'm sure we could have talked all day, Mr. Wake, but thank you so much for your time. Thank really you very much. It. Thank and, you. And uh, we'll see you again for the next, uh, next installment. See you in Kigali.